Hi, I'm Steve Arbaro. This is the Tish WNET studio here in Lincoln Center. It is my pleasure to introduce Pumzili Mulambo Nunca, is executive director of UN Women and also the former deputy president in South Africa from 2005 to 2008. I want to thank you so much. And if I mispronounce your name, I apologize. You, you said in South Africa, there's a pronunciation that I missed. What is it? Yeah, Mulambo Nunca. 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 It's, it's the language that is spoken in the Black Panther film. Is that right? Yeah. So I'm one of the few people who really understand here in the US what they're talking about when they switch into vernacular. You, I'm going to ask you about South Africa, South Africa in, a, in a minute, a new president there as we do this program. But this initiative, UN Women, describe it. UN Women uh, is one of the agencies of the United Nations established uh, to address issues of gender inequality in the world relatively young, uh, seven years old, and uh, involved uh, in addressing issues of ending violence against women uh, all over the world, uh, women's economic empowerment and income security uh, for women. We help government pass policies mm. uh, that enable them to finance and fund uh, advancement uh, of women, whether it is providing schools that have got latrines so that girls don't stay at home because mm. of that, Sub subsidizing transport systems so that girls and children in general don't have to walk uh, uh, long ways. We also involve in women, peace and security all over the world. As you know, there's lots of conflict. We also involve in, in addressing challenges that we face in humanitarian settings. Uh, working alongside our bigger organizations that, that do relief, but we look at particular the issues that impact uh, on women in those uh, situations. So, I'm, I'm thinking about this, the Me Too movement right now, <clears throat> is it a worldwide thing? Is it a thing going on in the it's, United it, States? There's different versions uh, of it. It's not called Me Too all over the it world. It is not. It is not called Me Too all over the world, but it's good to have the Me Too as you, as you have it in the US, because it's got greater visibility. Media is much more strong and visible. And of course, the people that are associated with Me Too attract a lot of media, which is good, because then it profiles the issue. But women all over the world uh, have safe spaces where they come together and talk about uh, the experiences that they've had and seek remedies uh, together. What many women in the world have not been very successful in, which the Me Too movement in the US has helped with is holding the perpetrators accountable and ensuring that uh, impunity is addressed. And that mm -hmm. is a very important contribution that the Me Too movement is, is, is making. And the emphasis that it is time, time, time is up. Something, time is up. Something has to change. I think actually that is, uh, if I'm not mistaken, that is in fact what Oprah Winfrey said in her speech that the time is up. Yes, no, absolutely. For those perpetrators. And that, that, that has uh, caught up, uh, you know, many people in the world are really addressing the fact that this, we cannot go on like this. There's enough evidence. We know that there's a problem. We know that there are serial perpetrators is and it offenders. Oh, yes. 35% uh, of women in the world live with one form of violence. That's a lot. 35% of women. More than one in three. Yes. Some form of violence. Uh, some form of violence. And the, <clears throat> bulk it of it, the bulk of it is domestic violence, which means that it happens at home, which is supposed to be a safe place for a woman. Uh, it happens at work, uh, which is in the form of harassment by usually the more senior uh, person at the workplace. It happens in public spaces. Women experience gang rapes. Uh, it also happens in schools uh, for girls. Uh, and then you have other types of violence, such as forced marriages, where children marry men that are old enough to be their fathers and, or their caregivers. And you have uh, female genital mutilation. Uh, and then in areas where there's conflict, you know, you have all sorts of, you know, cruelty that is meted against women. Women who are refugees, uh, Syria, uh, women in... Human trafficking uh, involving women. S sorry? Human trafficking. Human trafficking of women and, yeah. and girls, it's, yeah. So it's, it's, it, it's, it's important to fight this comprehensively because it comes in different shapes and, and, and forms. Let me ask you this, you brought in this report. Mm. Yes. 
turning promises into action, gender equality in the 2030 agenda for sustainable development. Talk about this. Yeah, you know, the governments of the world made a promise to each other and to the people of the world uh, to really work together to bring about far-reaching changes in the world. The aim is that this should happen by 2030, that you should uh, achieve substantive change for humanity. Uh, there are 17 goals that have been adopted around which uh, countries are working. One of them, goal five, focuses on gender equality, but actually uh, most of the goals uh, address issue of gender equality in one way or the other. Define, this gender, report, define gender equality. Gender equality is a, is, is a condition in society where men and women have equal rights, are able to enjoy those rights, those rights are protected, and there's no discrimination on the basis of gender. Equal education. Violence against women is the worst form of, uh, of discrimination and humiliation uh, together. Now, the issue is there isn't a, world, a, a country in the world that does not have gender inequality. Just the goal that is a goal for gender uh, in, uh, equality addresses some of the core uh, aspects of gender discrimination that we need to be fighting substantively along other forms of uh, discrimination. It addresses ending violence against women. It mm. addresses uh, women's participation because, as you know, there is no country where there's equal participation of women in decision-making bodies, in boards, in politics, in... Anywhere with power. And ev everywhere in the world. It, it addresses also the issue of uh, women and these cultural practices that are discriminate, right. discriminating mm -hmm. women, the most harmful one being those such as child marriage. But, you know, just gender stereotypes that perpetuate unequal pay. And, and before, I, I mean, before I chat here, I want to ask you about South Africa in a minute. You were the, in fact, mm -hmm. the deputy president there. Mm -hmm. We have a role, men have a role in everything you just described. How would you describe that role? There is such a significant role for men. We actually have a campaign at UN Women. What can and should we do? He for she. He for she. Sorry for He for she. He for she. Where we expect and encourage men to demonstrate positive masculinity, to be fathers who are present in their children's lives and do it happily and visibly, men who do not uh, beat up their their wives, men who actually also speak against colleagues in the locker room when they make uh, unacceptable comments about women and engage, men who will not look on the other side. Men at, we just don't at, turn the other cheek. Yeah, yeah. No, don't turn not the other Not acceptable. Yeah, not accessible. But also men who will, if they have power and influence, will ensure that where they have authority, they change regulations, rule, practices, so that there is fairness. You check in your treasury if women are paid equally in your place of work. That's a he for she. You make sure that uh, you recommend women to be on boards and you support them to get there. That's a he for she. One South Africa question. Um, you were there. You were there for it all. You yes. Know? Uh, Nelson Mandela and everything that he represented, not just there, but across mm. the globe. Mm. One thing about South Africa that is a misconception that many of us have that mm. you want to disabuse us of, mm. what would it be? What do we uh, need to know about you know, South Africa? And I will tell you something that he used to say himself, that people treat me like I'm a saint. I'm not a saint. I'm just a sinner who's trying. And you know what? Saints are boring, as he would say. <laughs> so he just was such a normal human being, amazing humility, yes. amazing sense of humor and determination really determination wow. like you would ever believe. I was in his cabinet, and as a younger person, sometimes I would receive a message from him, like 4 a.m., and then you'd know the president is not sleeping. <laughs> My goodness, let me <laughs> President jump. Mandela was sending you a message 4 a.m. Well, you know, not just to me, but, you know, work-related. There's cabinet in the morning, <laughs> and he wants to clarify something before he goes to the meeting, and oh, then, you know, gosh. The man is working. Why am I sleeping? I am half his age. <laughs> I better, you know. 
you know, be up and about and, and yeah. be productive. So it, and it's just quite inspiring to, yeah. to have a boss like that. Well, you're inspiring to a lot of people yeah. here watching on public television, Fios, and other places. And I want to thank you. Thank you. For joining us yeah. and continued, uh, I don't want to say success, continue the fight over at the UN. And we thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks. We'll thank you right, for having me. Oh, stay right there. We'll be right back right after this. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence. This special edition of One on One with Steve Adubato is brought to you from the Tisch WNET Studios at Lincoln Center. Funding has been provided by St. Joseph's Health, Berkeley College, Suez, Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Jersey, the law firm of Gibbons PC, NJ Best, New Jersey's 529 College Savings Plan, Turn a Dream into a Degree. And by Adler Aphasia Center, promotional support provided by NJ.com, Small News, Big News, True Jersey. And by JerseyBites.com. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area.